Hello and welcome to another Brucey bonus OSW Nogger U exclusive film review. It's me, your host for the day, the Barmaster V1. And I'm joined by the one and only waistcoat wearing, opinion sharing, OC pinning, golden nogger winning, lifetime host of the year. Jay Hunter. Oh, man, dear. <laughs> I'm gonna get, you're still on my bed. You're still on my bed. That was wonderful. I had to get in you burying OOC in somewhere. Excellent. Real and shoot. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? I am fantastic. How are you, sir? Excellent. Good, 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 good. High spirits, high trousers. Special thanks to Mega Bra Chandler, who chose this gem for this Nogger U exclusive review. I am taking the reins from Jay. It's going to be emotional and probably much worse than we <laughs> usually do. But I hope you still enjoy it. Hey, Alan Partridge, what movie are we reviewing? Jurassic Park. Yeah. And it's coming up in a second. <laughs> So how did the film come together? Universal won the right to make Jurassic Park in May of 1990 by paying Michael Crichton $1.5 million and a hefty cut of the profits. Spielberg wanted to make Schindler's List next, but he was given to go ahead only if he made Jurassic Park first. Spielberg wanted life-sized animatronics of every dinosaur. Holy shit. <laughs> but quickly realised that it just would have been astronomically costly. They had a mix of robot dinosaurs that were absolutely huge and filled in the gaps with computer-generated effects. Released in Ireland on August 25th, 1993, which, let's face it, is the movie date that counts worldwide. It's the epicentre, yeah. Yes. GMT, Glendalock, mean kind. <laughs> Glass Nevin. <laughs> Uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, Was it him or is it his non-union Mexican equivalent? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spielberg. Uh, Schindler es bueno. Señor Burns es el diablo. Known for directing Jaws. Fantastic. E.T. Brilliant. Indiana Jones and the Crystal School. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Schindler's List, Munich and Saving Private Ryan. Wow, Whopper. Man, he's made some pretty good movies over the years. I'll uh, give him his due. Based on the 1990 novel of the same name, written by Michael Crichton, also known for uh, writing Congo, Rising Sun, The Sphere, and Westworld. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, which, let's face it, is Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> so it turns out that Sam Neill wasn't the first choice for the main part. Um, uh, first was William Hurt, who turned it down without even reading anything. And then Harrison Ford. Damn. After he turned it down, there was a mad fucking scramble. And Sam Neill was cast with three weeks left prior to shooting. I don't know what you do if you had Harrison Ford and Jeff Goldblum on the set at the same time. Like, cause- Oh my God. That's two Jeff Goldblums or two Harrison Fords. <laughs> yes. Jurassic Park. Starring Sam Neill, who is best known for his parts in The Hunt for Red October, The Piano, and Event Horizon, which is a movie that I I really like. Jeff Goldblum, who's in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Yes. The Fly, Independence Day, and most recently seen in Thor Ragnarok. Oh, that's right, the Goldblum. Yeah, who, by the way, Sam Neill is also in, in case you missed them. He has a small cameo. The actor who plays Odin at the opening of the movie. Oh, the actor beside Matt Damon. Yes, yes. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Richard Attenborough, best known for his parts in the 1958 version of Dawn Kirk. And his more famous brother. Yes. <laughs> Miracle on 34th Street, which is my favourite Christmas movie ever. And Hamlet. Laura Dern, who is in Mask, not The Mask. And most recently, The Last Jedi. Jedi! Oh. What do you know? Who is she? 
Admiral something or other who uh, took over after... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. the ignorant the, bitch. The gobshite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah her. Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're up to speed, let's fucking do it. Rock and roll. Hold on to your butts. The movie opens up with park workers loading a new dinosaur into the cage, which we find out is a velociraptor. Everything goes horribly wrong, and one poor guy is killed in a comical Hollywood cliche fashion. Immediately, you know that this place is not safe. Yeah. And then we go excavating with uh, Dr. Sam and Uh, Bitch from Star Wars. (laughs) Bitch from Star Wars. Uh, Ellie Sattler. Thank you. Alan goes on this massive rant about how dinosaurs have turned into birds. And some cunt of a kid is like, oh, he's just like a big turkey. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, is he as a child? (laughs) The script is so tight. Like, I love the subtle, important information dropping that they do here for future reference. The archaeologist, Alan, he hates kids. That's his personal story arc. The T-Rex's vision is based on movement. Raptors work in packs to Pearl Harbor you. And then, obviously, I want to slash your dummy open. (laughs) Welcome to Jurassic Park, children. (laughs) Maybe across the belly, spilling your intestines. Out of nowhere, helicopter comes. Big cunt lands right over the dig site. John Hammond is waiting for Alan and Ellie to ask them to leave their dig, join him so that they can sign off so that he can finally open Jurassic Park. What kind of park is this? It's right up your alley. We meet movie heel Dennis Nedry. Newman! (laughs) Hello, Jerry. Hello, Newman. (laughs) He is the head security guy for Richard Attenborough's Jurassic Park. Yes. Nedry meets with a rival scientist who asks him to rob 15 embryos out of the park for $1.5 million. Did you notice that he squeals and it sounds exactly like the dino that will kill him? Oh, on. wow, cool. It's really awesome. Oh, you God. It's cool to compartmentalize inside. <laughs> and I love his line there at the end. He's like, don't get cheap on me now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. So the lads get a helicopter to Jurassic Park. Which is where we get introduced to John Williams' epic fucking score (laughs) this score still gives me like chills 25 years later it's fucking amazing and the helicopter guy is like oh welcome to Jurassic Park where nothing could possibly go wrong (laughs) there it is Dr. Hammond, he needs the two archaeologists to sign off on the safety of Jurassic Park, but he's also gotten a couple other lads in here, Goldblum and Sneaky Lawyer. He's so sneaky. To oversee the safety as well. I love this gimmick where we get to see a theme park before it's open, and it's not even coupon day. (laughs) I also love how the park has been commercialized as well, so we get to see the lunch boxes and water bottles and t-shirts, and it's like, oh, yeah. All of this merch came out in real life. So they were just showing the real life (laughs) merch that they were going to sell and make billions off. It's a circle of life. It's fucking great. Brad fires his net launcher. Ellie launches her grappling hook. Paul Doom fires a tranquilizer. Each sold separately. It's here where a crew see their first ever dinosaur and they all fucking mark out. You see the reaction of the archaeologists and stuff. For a good 20 seconds or yes. less before you see the dinosaurs. Childlike wonder. What do they see? Brachiosaurs. They don't actually say what they are. But you saw. <laughs> it's an apatosaurus. 
I would be shocked if it's anything else. <laughs> Stephen, should this film have been called Jurassic Park? No, absolutely not. Most of the dinosaurs in this movie are from the Triassic era. Try, <laughs> try, but it's a great fucking name. Yeah. How'd you do this? I'll show you. Hammond takes them on a tour and shows them a quick little movie all about how they got the blood out of a mosquito that had died and being frozen in amber. And then millions of years later, they take out its blood and use the dinosaur, sorry, dinosaur. I love the little guy's voice. It's fucking amazing. Scientists take the blood out and they splicey splicey it with the DNA of frogs. And from that, they make DNA of dinosaurs, which they can clone, which is bollocks, but it's great for a movie. Yeah, yeah, there was a bit of a jump there at the end. I was on board with everything, but fill in the DNA with these frogs, and here we go, we have a dinosaur egg. Wait, hang on, what? Which is very funny, because the movie forces it down your throat that dinosaurs are not reptiles, and they're birds, and frogs are neither reptiles <laughs> nor birds, they're amphibians. And they do this kind of having the frogs, they can change sex in a single sex environment. That's a bit needed for the plot as well. So, okay. It's all we're getting. So we'll take it. Yeah. (laughs) I love how they're weaning us into the movie. They're dropping us slightly deeper, closer and closer each time. From seeing fast glimpses of dinos to a brontosaurus in the No such thing as a brontosaurus. Really? Yes. uh, Is it an apatosaurus with a wig? uh, So there was a paleontologist that found a brachiosaur and he named it brontosaurus but it turned out that he just found an apatosaurus oh yeah hmm. steven's using his notes for this one <laughs> no this is coming off my uh, brain uh when i was growing up i was obsessed with everything dinosaurs like absolutely like loved them i had so many toys i read all of the comics and shit uh paleontologist jack horner this guy's name was fucking everywhere. So, yeah. You get to see from glimpses of dinos to a patasaurus in the distance. Showing the effect of feeding raptors without actually seeing the raptors themselves. To getting to see an egg being hatched. So now you see a baby dinosaur. Now we see a triceratops up close, but it's sick. So we've been dropped closer and closer to getting to see kind of a real... Real uh, dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. The obviously crooked head of security there, Newman blasts about being paid peanuts for his job. He signed the fucking contract. Yeah, it's like, oh, how dare you pay me what I signed. (laughs) You think that kind of automation is easy? Or cheap? This whole film could have been avoided if you paid him more than his $25 a day. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, yeah, but he's only based on the fucking gate, Jay. (laughs) You know? And it had six people in. (laughs) Five comps. (laughs) Before we move on, I just have to say, like, the set, when they get in the cars and they go around Jurassic Park, are like, holy shit, this is a wondrous, iconic set that we're seeing here. It's fucking amazing. Spared no expense. I would... Like to visit there. I would fucking love it. (laughs) I would lose my shit. (laughs) Automatic electric cars, and it's powered by the strip that's on the ground. Watch your fucking step. Yeah. Holy shit. Spared no expense. (laughs) By the way, they were just normal Ford gas-powered Jeeps. And have you seen any Jeeps recently, Steve? Oh my god! It turns out that one of my neighbours that lives around the corner has a Jurassic Park Jeep, and I mark out to it every time that I walk by it. So yes, I got the wife to take a picture of me marking out to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's powerful, Jay. Awesome picture, man. Look how happy I am. <laughs> then they meet the safari dude, and he drops some important information about raptors. They're lethal at nine months old. They can go up to 50 to 60 miles per hour. They can jump, and they have problem-solving intelligence. They are putting these raptors over super fucking strong. It's a good gimmick, because I went into this movie, right? And who was on the poster? T-Rex but this movie goes the Hulk Hogan of dinosaurs he is the Hulk Hogan of fucking dinos but this movie goes out of its way to be like oh but the raptors so they're like the macho man of, <laughs> of this movie 
Ooh, and also Dilophosaurus, they spit and blind their prey. In the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Do they Uh, at least have the frills? They don't have the neck frills. They do have the two plates on their head, and they're much bigger in real life. They wanted to make them smaller so that they didn't compete yeah. with the raptors. Oh, wow. Yeah. They So the raptors got the Roman reins pushed. The raptors. <laughs> the velocirains. Yes. Mm. <laughs> so Hammond's grandkids, Lexi and Timmy, Lex. show up. Wow. Ow. <laughs> wow. Which I don't think was a very smart move considering that the island's safety hasn't been signed off on yet. I think Hammond's kind of fucked up there. I think they're trying to just make it, I'm the happy grandfather, so baby face push. Yeah. Although he's Mr. Head of a billion dollar conglomerate and he's trying to push through an unsafe park. Yes. So he's the big heel. Absolutely a massive heel. But he's pushed as a baby face. So he's the Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Alan goes out of his way to not be in the same Jeep as the kids because he doesn't like children. But Ellie tells Lexi to go into the same Jeep as Alan, saying that it will be good for him. Obviously, she's trying to pressure him into having children, which is not fair. Yes. I was, you know. <laughs> he is the John Cena <laughs> and she's the Nikki Bella. <laughs> Wonderful. I enjoyed how the script cut scenes as soon as we're done whatever the scene needs to do. So a bit of exposition on the tour guide. Stop it, I'm getting off. Or in the security area, your man just goes, quiet, they're entering the Tyrannosaurus pack. Yeah, yeah. Or Goldblum, he hits on Blonde Girl. I'm looking for the next ex-Mrs. Malcolm. And Dr. Sam just gets out of the vehicle to explore onto the next scene. Uh, Dr. Malcolm, quite creepy around. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot movie. of touching of hair and hand-holding. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she was into it, though. She was loving it. Also a bit oblivious to it as well. Like. And yeah, a bit of a ditz, despite most likely having a PhD. Um, no wonder the rebellion failed. <laughs> The amount of blood distending your vessels, imperfections in the skin. Imperfections in the skin. So the tour of the island comes to a stop uh, because a storm is coming. We do get to go to the security station there. Newman, he's talking to the guy on the dock and the video feed is actually just playing an AVI and yeah. he's kind of hidden the play button. Nice. It's amazing. And we see security dude, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> it's my beer. <laughs> It'll get you drunk. <laughs> oh my god! It's a. By the way, do you find it really jarring watching an actor in a movie or TV smoking? It's weird now, but isn't it? It was nothing back in the nineties. It like, was you know? acceptable yeah. at the time. It was cool as well. You know, yeah. cool people smoke. <laughs> <laughs> a cool and evil people smoke. Nobody else. <laughs> Nedry shuts down the park's systems, gives the sussiest reason for leaving I've ever seen. <laughs> he is sweating bullets. Does anybody want a, a soda or something? Because uh, I'm, I'm going up the machine. I thought maybe, you know, I, I'd get somebody something. Because I've had all these sweets and I think I'm going to get something salty. I thought maybe somebody would uh... The foreshadowing is great here. Like when Newman goes to steal the dino DNA, the camera pays particular attention to the T-Rex and the Velociraptor. Yes. It's like, pay attention. These are important. By the way, uh, they make it a point to distinguish between, well, Vegasaurs and Metasaurs. I think that's awesome. (laughs) It's great. So kids can understand it very quickly. Yes. Yes. But I have to say, Lexi, she just says, well, I happen to be a vegetarian. (sighs) I'm like... With an attitude like that, you should be a vegan, you know? (laughs) Fuck off, Lexi. There's a bit where they're walking right after that, and Ellie goes, Oh, well, I'm not a computer nerd, I'm a hacker. I was like, oh, fuck off, this is going to be a thing now. Spelled like, like, hacks or, you know? (laughs) Um, We can talk about the hacking thing later on, but you know, like, the way you were saying that this movie is masterful at having a line which then... 40 minutes later means something the hacker line does but the hacking is uh, <laughs> is something it doesn't you know? count if the computer is on it <laughs> open like, <laughs> clicking on a folder is you know it's not hacking you know i love this like it's lovely bright tropical weather for the first act and then all right 
The weather turns to thunder, lightning, massive downpour, day turns to night because the park is turning dangerous. The main event has arrived. Oh, me meow. The T-Rex. It's fucking awesome. Holy shit, Jay. This has to be one of the most iconic scenes in cinema history. There are so many shots that are like indelibly etched in all of movie making. Yeah. And in pop culture. The eye of the dinosaur or the With the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. The foot of the dinosaur. And the water cup rippling, which is probably my favorite one. Spielberg got that for he was driving home in his Jeep and he had a glass of water on his dashboard listening to Earth, Wind and Fire (laughs) really loudly and the bass was making the water ripple and he was like, oh, fucking bucket. And you know how he managed to do that during the movie? Oh, they put a like a guitar string in the dashboard, something like that. And they just had a bloke looking it awesome it's brilliant movie Genius. magic yes, yes it's fucking amazing i love how we see the ten thousand volts big warning sign but the wires have been trampled and broken uh, security is off best of luck yeah you're all fucked there's a bit where lex is looking at the goat that was chained up and now the chain is gone and then they look up and a limb falls on the roof i love the way the dinos they all leave a limb of their prey you know <laughs> For dramatic effects. Yes. <laughs> These dinosaurs, they're showmen. Where did the goat go? For them. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So the blood sucking lawyer bails on the kids. He fucking <laughs> pegs it. He leaves the fucking door open and he uh, runs into the jacks. Which and, is hilarious. And sits there and just uh, hopes and prays. Every line of dialogue is purposeful in this movie. Goldblum says, Oh, kids get scared. And he's like, I didn't say I was scared. Kids do dumb stuff. And I love this because they need to do dumb stuff to for the plot and to get the drama of it. But you can't get mad at them. They're just kids and they're scared shitless. And they're absolutely terrified. Yeah. You can only imagine like what a child who was, who was going through this would do. They would panic. They would scream. They would run. They'd grab a flashlight and throw it into the <laughs> dinosaur's eye. <laughs> it's like the vision is based on movement. Get a flashlight and shine it up at him. <laughs> and fucking shake it around a bit. <laughs> It's fucking amazing. Don't move. Can't see us if we don't move. After Newman turns off all the systems, Jackson is trying to turn everything back on. And he tries three times. And then we get the famous... Uh, uh, uh. Uh, you didn't uh, say the magic word uh, uh, uh. that's something that we do nowadays like <laughs> still <laughs> I have to say like it's an iconic movie scene but Tarzaning to avoid a falling car and then saving the kid from a car in the trees I think that's quite unnecessary kind of movie action yeah you yeah know, like it's a bit bollocks like but we are talking about a film with resurrecting dinos <laughs> so. but it, you didn't need it it was a bit over the top I would Yeah, you're absolutely right. No one thinks of the falling Jeep at the end of that scene. It's all about the T-Rex flipping the car, ripping the tire, which is awesome. And and like then it does its roar and you can see the the like tire hanging out of its jaw. Oh, it's fucking money, Jay. Alan grabs a flare to save the kids. Uh, He throws it down. Big brass balls on this guy. Oh my god. Let's get out of this car <laughs> <laughs> and get the dinosaur's attention. Uh, did you know that he was originally booked to uh, get out of the jeep and also run and like not save the kids? Gold Bloom said, hold, hold, hold on a sec here. He's your top face in this yeah. movie. He should risk himself to save the kids and that will also push his arc on that Absolutely, he yeah, yeah. cares about the kids and he's growing as a person. Spot on, mate. Ian? Remind me. 
to thank John for a lovely weekend. Ellie and I think it's Robert, who's the park ranger. They find Gold Bloom's character and they splint his leg, put him in the jeep. Then we have the T Rex car chase scene, uh, which is fucking awesome as well. When I was watching, I was like, this would make a great scene in uh, an arcade game. Yes. There was a shooter kind of arc, Jur- like Jurassic Park, not known for their good video games. I think people would say that the one in the Mega Drive was pretty good, which was the 2D side scrolling game. And the one on the SNES, which was like a top down shooter. Uh, yeah. And what do you think of the arcade shooter one? I loved it. Fucking hard though. Yeah, uh, yeah it's been a, I could it never was, beat it. it. Yeah, probably wasted enough money in that game that I could have gone out and bought a proper game. So Alan and the kids make it up into the tree. There's a nice moment of reprieve while they're watching the singing brachiosaurs. Reminded me of the end of The Last of Us where Ellie goes and pets the giraffe. The, the, oh my God, you're absolutely yeah. right. Where it's just, huh. Although luckily the giraffe doesn't sneeze in her face <laughs> and we go, wah, 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 wah. Here. is an act of sheer will. Next time it'll be flawless. Act three! So Hammond is eating the ice cream at the visitor's centre because all of the fridges are out, so it's a great idea to eat all the ice cream. That's actually really, really good. He's like, oh, woe is me, blah, 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 blah. Ellie walks in and she just basically is like, hold on a sec here. This is your fault People are dying. Things have gone to shit. You need to fix it. I was like, good girl. That's great. Yeah, Hammond here. We get to see both the noble ambition, you know, childlike wonder, but the wild ignorance and disrespect for the power of fucking dinosaurs. He's just like, ah, because people have died. Like, And he's like, ah, next time it'll be flawless. Yeah, what's the deal there? Like, that is a heel line that Hammond shouldn't have said. It should have been said by the blood-sucking lawyer. Because that'd be perfect for his character. Because he doesn't give a fuck about human life. He just wants to make millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. <laughs> Which I can assure you, they never made. <laughs> Tens of dollars. Tens of- oh, and did you like uh, Sexy Gold Bloom? He's like, <gasps> oh ah. my God. I actually have it written down here. My God. Sexy Gold Bloom. Looking like Shawn Michaels in his play, play <laughs> girl picture. All he's missing is a world title covering his junk. <laughs> we haven't talked about Nedry. Newman. Who has robbed the dino babies who are in the shaving foam can. And he's on his way to the pier to jump on the boat and then jump off it yes. <laughs> later on. Come on. My pets, my pets, my pets. That's a stick, boy. Yes. You like a stick? You want to get it? And no wonder you're extinct. And he meets the Dilophosaurus. That's where he meets his gruesome end, and the can of shaving foam falls out of his coat, rolls down the, the hill, and is buried on the mud, most likely never to be seen ever again. He died for nothing. A fitting end. I love this scene when he's like working his way back up to the jeep and he goes I'm going to run you over when I get back in this jeep I was like oh you're fucking getting it mate he's such a low rent scumbag but it's like family friendly villain yes as well yeah brilliant <laughs> oh uh, what did you think of the CG Gallimimus it's a fully CG flock the kind of ostrich like ones in all fairness, for 1993, it's not that bad, but it's definitely jarring in a movie where most things look great. Agreed. I thought it was very brave of them to do fully CG in the daytime. Yes. So, like, yeah. no hiding of flaws here. Yeah. I have to say, they have these musical stings, and it's like, big bang at John Williams. Of this oh, movie. yeah. Bum, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, there's only one guy that does that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Wait, so they reset the security system, so everything's offline, but to turn it back online... They need to flip a switch, basically. Yes. So Ellie and Robert uh, leave to turn back on the breaker. Robert then cops that the raptors are hunting them. I thought this bit felt a lot like Predator. When um, T Hawk knows we're being hunted, and there's a predator. <laughs> yeah. mm. Anyway, he's just looking off in the distance, and you're kind of in the jungle. I actually thought that this guy was a pretty cool character. Kind of wish that he had a bigger part. Um, he, Robert, is uh, hunting down the raptors with his uh, gun. He has one raptor in his sights, takes aim, and is about to go for the kill shot when all of a sudden, from his flank comes another raptor and we get the famous clever girl i love this line it's That's fucking an iconic amazing line yeah it really it all is time, yeah. clever girl I love that the T-Rex and the Velociraptors, they're the two biggest threats on the island, but they're also very different. Like, one's a massive wrecking machine, like a lumbering tank, and the other, you know, smaller, svelte, learning, intelligent, hunting, and they're in a pack. So, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, the T-800 and the T-1000 or something, you know. Two different, very distinct types of villains. Both terrifying. And awesome. And fucking amazing, yeah. Hammond, I think we're back in business. <laughs> Ellie Pearl harbored by a random raptor who we have no idea how they got into the building because she locked the door after her and how he managed to get behind the pipes. But it was a cool shock. Uh, like that's straight up horror slasher. Yes, yes, absolutely. She pegs it and randomly starts to sell the leg. <laughs> um... <laughs> She wasn't hit in the leg at all, right? Yeah, yeah, I wondered about that. She is selling this hard. Uh, She has a future in wrestling. (laughs) Well, later she sees Tim start selling his leg. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's right. It's just something going around. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, Alan finally makes it back with the kids and he is reunited with a terrified Ellie who, uh, still selling the leg, limps up to him. And goes, run. And then she runs up to him and jumps into his arm, (laughs) therefore preventing him from running. (laughs) Um, It's like, leave me behind, but take me with you. (laughs) Yes, and carry me with you. The kids, they've survived and everyone's back in the control room. For your men of it. Men of it. I love that the kids get a reward for surviving, which is, oh my god, all this uh, dessert. Oh, jellies, yeah. And Lexi eats veggies. Boo. Are you eating fucking broccoli <laughs> after what you've gone through? <laughs> Come on, love. It's your main event. This is the action blowout for the rest of the film. And we get an awesome cat and mouse chase through the kitchen, which is really tense. It feels very, very different to the other action scenes throughout the movie. It's it's a very intimate haunting. You know? <laughs> I, I love the, you can see the kind of chef doors and you just see the nose of the raptor peek through and it blows onto the glass and it's like fucking hell it's amazing like terrifying they're put over so strong and we've been told the entire movie that these are the biggest fucking threat in this park and this park has a t-rex um so they're the smartest and they learn they're intelligent and so whenever they look around they take their time with it. it's beautiful anticipation it's like they are working out the best way to murder these children yes yeah and i love it pants down to their feet and you just see and it's like, oh, shit. you can see them go to work and it's, it's terrifying it's fucking amazing and you're in awe it? of it yeah Oh, 
Man, it's only when you talk about this movie that you realise that it has about two dozen of these moments that are iconic. There are dozens and dozens of movies that have one or two moments. But this one, it's just like scene after scene after scene and you're like, this movie's incredible. Unbelievably great. And we're not finished. (laughs) And we're still not even finished, yeah. Lex and Tim are moving about the kitchen, changing corners, hiding. They're absolutely petrified. They do really well, have to say. Way uh, better than I would. Yes. Oh, th- like I think that if this was happening to me, I th- I think I'd just give up. I would have died back at the car. <laughs> 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 My favorite bit in the raptor stalking the kids was when the raptor sees Lex and runs at it and then smashes into it because it's actually a hyper reflective sheen and she's actually in the opposite. It's Kobe. done so well they faked me out and i've seen this movie <laughs> uh it's done brilliantly it, it was a great fake out because yeah. you thought that was certain doom there you yeah know? and then the kids find the adults alan gets a shotgun and they barricade themselves in the security room where hacker man hacker Wallman <laughs> does her magic oh my god so there's a couple more close moments and they escape through the vents and then go out to the scaffolding because the place isn't done yet. They get cornered by a couple of velociraptors. <laughs> Out of nowhere! Like an RKO! <laughs> Man, this booking the T-Rex, giving him the hot tag... <laughs> And he's booked like a super baby face who cleans house. And then we get the hero shot with the when dinosaurs rule the earth. I love that shot again. And he's like, no, he's not a cow. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking amazing. Spielberg wasn't going to include that because he said it was too cheesy. And then he said, okay, let's shoot it anyway. I think his animation team said, you have to leave this in. Holy shit. And it's like, yeah, okay. And it's just one more shot in this movie that is iconic and will be etched into my brain for the rest of my life. Jay, we get the end of Predator as they're all in a chopper and they're solemn, terrified and tired and it's fucking great. (laughs) (laughs) and it wasn't they didn't start chilling the next film it was just there we go here's the end and that's it It, yeah it was perfect it was unbelievable curtains down So, how did Jurassic Park do at the box office, Jay? Bomb. Oh, terrible. Pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it since. Made on a budget of 63 million. Ah, should have sprung for 65. Jurassic Park pulled in an outstanding 914 million dollars, making it at the time the highest grossing movie ever until 1997 and Titanic came along and ruined it all. <laughs> However, it would see a second run in cinemas in 3D in 2013, which saw top $1 billion. Oh, that's nice. Did you know that this is the first movie to ever have digital sound? Spielberg founded DTS Mm -hmm. for this movie. Wow. And it would go on to win three Academy Awards, two of which were for sound. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so, because the sound is fucking incredible in this movie. And the other one's for visual effects. Visual effects. Yeah, like 20 awards in all. (laughs) Received very well by both critics and fans, scoring an 8.1 on IMDb and a 92% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Not good enough. 8.1 is absolutely not high enough. 
I, I went actually on the IMDb to look where is it on the top 100 list and it's like fucking 300 or something. What? It's like, get out! Oh, it doesn't have the character development. I think it does. Oh, I was like, it has fucking T-Rex <laughs> and Velociraptor having a scrap. <laughs> That's what it has, mate. Jurassic Park is frightening in the dark All the dinosaurs are running What did you think? Wide. It's alright <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a movie What an incredible film Holy shit A testament to the majesty And the magic of movie making It's still amazing Wondrous Action adventure film with family friendly horror Finely crafted Anticipation and payoff Excellently executed, mandatory viewing for every human on the planet. Six on ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is a ten for me. A perfect film. Holy shit. Uh, I love this film. I agree with absolutely everything that you've said. I have it written here. Just, whoa. What a movie. This movie in 1993 blew my fucking mind. Credit to my dad. Because I sat next to him. And was I was Terminator 2 not playing. <laughs> I must have fucking ruined this movie for him. Because every time the scene changed, I'm like, Dad, it's Gallimimus. Oh my God. It's Apatosaurus. <laughs> it's not Brontosaurus, Dad. It's Apatosaurus. <laughs> I, I must have fucking wrecked his head. It's very rare that I go back to watch a movie that blew my mind as a kid. And now that I'm 34... It's better. There are little things like, you know, like the characters and the writing and setting up things that are paid off that I would never have gotten as a kid. A couple of things have an age great, but that doesn't fucking matter. By the way, I watched this movie twice in a week and the second time was as good as the first time. Wow. Yeah, because I watched this with the family and I didn't know that we were doing this. When you told me that we were, I was like, oh, I have to watch it again. And then the second I pressed play, I didn't care. I was completely sucked in. I enjoyed every second of it. Incredible. Excellent. And thanks to Megabra Chandler. Ooh, what did he have to say? So the reason I chose Billy and the Clonosaurus <laughs> is because this is probably the literally only time where a movie will have a handicap match between two Velociraptors and T-Rex and not be a shitty sci-fi, fuck off with that sci-fi nonsense, channel, original movie or filler space on Netflix. Also, I really wanted to see you guys review my favourite movie, so there's that. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, we uh did. As for my thoughts on the film, I still think it holds up even 25 years later and really is the best dinosaur movie ever made. As a kid, I loved watching the T-Rex eating the lawyer and wrecking the raptors and the whole dinosaur zoo concept. As an adult, I can appreciate things like the effort made to combine practical and computer-generated special effects to make dinosaurs look real and scenes like the lunch debate or where Hammond talks about his flea circus. It is truly a film I love, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the funny pages, Chandler. Nice. Oh, man, what a great film. Chandler, thank you. This was a pleasure. And Stephen, well done. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed uh, hosting. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> was it weird? I don't like it. <laughs> I am not a host. Well, you're going to do it next time. <laughs> oh, God. For the next Nugger You review. So, let's sign out for the evening. Guys, I hope you enjoyed our review of Jurassic Park. Um, yeah, truly a movie for the ages and all ages. Uh, go out of your way to watch it. It's incredible. But what will be our next Brucey Bonus Nugger You exclusive video review? It's an internet darling. <laughs> an indie love. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Hey, doesn't work as well without my chip. <laughs> uh, you can watch all of our other Nogger U exclusives on noggeru.oswreview.com. Kablamo. So, from myself and from Jay. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and remember, oh, winners you. <laughs> 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 <laugh